Well, Joe Biden is off to a NATO summit to discuss what steps Ukraine must meet in order to join their organization. Yeah, but he has a history of flip-flopping when it comes to Ukraine. So let's go off the wall with some of his promises, the top five broken promises when it comes to Ukraine. Pete, let's start with the promise of U.S. involvement, how deep we will get involved, how much we will commit, both with our, our treasure and then walking up to the edge of our blood. We'll start with fighter jets. Uh, Joe Biden said there would be limited U.S. involvement when it comes to how much we're going to push into Ukraine, how much weapon we're going to push into Ukraine, because we can't flirt with World War III. The idea, the idea that we're going to send in offensive equipment and have planes and tanks and trains uh, going in with American pilots and American crews, just understand, and uh, don't kid yourself, no matter what you all say, that's called World War III. That was March of 2022, over a year ago. He said getting involved with F-16s could bring on World War III. Now, he did mention in there, Will, American crews yes. and American... Uh, so they might be able to say, well, we're not quite flying them yet or supplying them yet, but we're really close. In March, we approved training Ukrainian pilots on simulators in the United States. Yeah. And in May, we authorized sending F-16s to Ukraine from U.S. allies. So... If not us, then them. So the point is, Joe Biden draws this very bright line for the American public in talking about our limited involvement in this war. And then we incrementally creep, creep closer to that line every step of the way. Training so, Ukrainian pilots in Arizona to fly our planes in Ukraine, we're walking closer. Exactly right. And when you see this timeline, why couldn't it say July, Joe Biden agrees at NATO summit to supply F-16s? I mean, there's there, every step has been more and more involvement, which he said would mean World War three. That's right. Including, by the way, when it comes to that, what we're going to send over there, th we are now sending not, not simply planes, but Abrams tanks. Abrams tanks made by Americans. So in January, Biden authorized sending Abrams tanks to Ukraine. There was a big push and pressure about that because of the veracity of Russian tanks. Apparently, Germany had a big reason for that because they said they would send a few of their tanks and they didn't want to be the only ones doing yeah, it. Yeah, it's a total of 31 cents so far. Abrams tanks, along now with those F-16s, again, as we push closer to the breaking point of that promise. But, Will, here's the kicker. They're not even on the battlefield yet, these 31. We said we would manufacture 31. So the uh, defense industrial complex got its money to build those, but Ukraine still doesn't have the tanks. So it's really interesting when you look at the dynamics of the whole thing. So the news this week was that the U.S. would be begin providing Ukraine with cluster bombs. Well, that's certainly at least a hypocrisy, if not a broken promise, from we heard from the administration. Here's Jin Psaki. There are reports of illegal cluster bombs and vacuum bombs being used by the Russians. Is there a red line for how much violence uh, will be tolerated against civilians in this manner that's illegal and potentially a war crime? It is. It would be. I don't have any confirmation of that. We have seen the reports. Uh, if, if that were true, it would potentially be a war crime. So it was a war crime for Vladimir Putin to use cluster bombs. But apparently not on Friday when we learned that the U.S. would be providing cluster bombs to Ukraine as they fight trench warfare and this they're very much flailing counteroffensive, which hasn't worked to this point. Cluster bombs, one big bomb that drops bomblets, clusters that hit a wider range of targets and a less specific and defined range of targets. You know, we're talking about the Biden administration's own words here war crime, World War III, as they walk closer to the things that fulfill those promises. Yeah, the asterisk on this one, Will, on this is that the, the uh, dirty little secret is that they're running low on traditional munitions, conventional artillery, but there's a supply of, of these cluster bombs, so we're going to provide those in the interim as we uh, lessen our stocks of munitions because we're fighting this war in Ukraine for them. Number four, long-range rockets. Joe Biden. We're not going to send the Ukraine rocket systems that he's striked into Russia. So it's, it's staggering. We're not going to do this. World War III, red lines. We're not, we're not, we're not until we do. The U.S. has provided Ukraine with over 30 HIMAR rockets. By the way, that's a high-mobility artillery rocket system. So it's not that we've given them 30 rockets. 
We've given them 30 systems. And you have expertise strike. in this. Tell me what these well, are. I'm not, I'm not an artilleryman, but I do. It's, they're, they're driven around by a five ton truck. They've, they, it ramps up in the back, and you can sure, shoot, depending on the type of system, between one and six missiles. It's all very, very expensive, Long range. costing millions of dollars. Depending on the type of system, varying ranges, but they're accurate within three feet. So if you want to hit the target, you're going to hit the target. In fact, in one of them, very high accuracy to 300 kilometers, you hit within a meter. So if you're worried about Ukraine's ability to go into Russia, you don't supply HIMARS because they can reach Russia right. with a great deal of accuracy, which you think would escalate the war even further. Incrementally escalating this war. Finally, Joe Biden's promising, as you heard at the top, no American troops in Ukraine. But let me be clear, our forces are not engaged and will not engage in the conflict with Russian forces in Ukraine. Our forces are not going to Europe to fight Ukraine, but to defend our NATO allies. American forces not in Ukraine. Let me be clear almost always seems to be followed by something that's not clear or abjectly false. As the documents that were leaked by that National Guard airman, Jack Teixeira, Jack the Leaker, shows the U.S. already has special forces teams on the ground in Ukraine. Doesn't surprise me that they're out there no. teaching and mentoring already. Maybe. Yeah. And are they involved in direct combat? Up to, 14, up to 14 special operations forces from the United States were in Ukraine by February of 2023. Oh. <laughs> now, you could probably play semantics with a lot of these promises. Oh, the draw, the thin line here, thin line there. But the point is, every line that's been drawn has been blurred or crept in upon. And we're talking about a fairly high-stakes game of incrementalism marching towards, in his own words, World War III. That's right. And what if there was a U.S. casualty? What, do, what does that mean? If you're going to give all this advanced weaponry to Ukraine who's not prepared to use it, you better have experts there that can train them on it, which is what U.S. Special Forces do. So it's not a surprise they're there, but don't tell us they're not going to be or that World War III is coming. It's a very dangerous game, and they're diving deeper and deeper into it. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. Please join the conversation. Put your comments and suggestions below in the comment section. Thank you for subscribing to this news channel. You will be notified of any breaking news and new post as you become part and parcel of the TAO Media family. Please like and share TAO Media. We love you all. Please support TAO Media Foundation by joining membership and